Hey everybody, this is David, and today what I want to talk about is how to theme a view in Drupal 7. Um, this is something that, if you're familiar with the views module, you know it's pretty powerful. You can take all your content and you can have it display in different kinds of ways. You can have it display in tables, you can have it display in um, unformatted lists, you can have pictures, you can have no pictures, you can do all kinds of things. But one thing that um, took me a while to realize is how to make it look the way I want it to. And so theming a view is very important and that's what I want to run through with you today. Um, here's a little motivation and background for this video. Uh, I was working on a project called Hey Rental. I was working on a custom module for a site called Hey Rental. And what I wanted to do was to be able to click a button on a list of customers. And what that button would do is send a message to the customer saying, hey, uh, you owe us this money for your rent. This is just a reminder, so please go ahead and pay us. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at the before and after of the view uh, showing the customer list. So I'm going to go ahead and jump to the before view. And this, is before for, this is before formatting. Um, as you can see, you just have an unformatted bunch of fields here. Um, so you have the title, which is this. And then you have the customer name and the property where they're living and then the rent. So that's their monthly rent. And if you were to give uh, the project to, um, you know, your customer, the website owner uh, looking like this, it certainly uh, might be functional where they could click and they could send the message, but it certainly wouldn't be attractive. And I doubt if uh, any website user or web application users would be happy with that. So let's take a look at the, uh, the after, after theming. And so this is what we ended up making it look like. Um, and what we did was we took the title and made it look like this button here. We made it into a button and we took the other fields and put them off to the right hand side, which is what you see here. Now let's get started and take a look at the first uh, steps that we need to do to make this happen. Um, the first thing that I did was I uh, looked at the view itself on the admin page where you um, where you define everything inside the view, which you can see here uh, the view called rent due, rent due texts, and you have your fields and you have everything. But what you what we're going to look at is we're going to scroll down and look at two things on the right hand side under advanced. The first thing is we're going to look at the theme information. And then later on, we're going to look at uh, the CSS class, which in this case I called RD, and it applies to this view. And what that is for is it tells the system uh, in your CSS, apply this CSS only to this one particular view and not all the other views with the same field names. But for the moment, let's just open up theme information and we're going to look at the template file that this view is using. Oops. So this, if you're not familiar with it, probably looks like a lot of gibberish. Um, but keep in mind, this is an unformatted uh, display of the view. It's not a table. It's an unformatted uh, list. So we're just going to jump down here where it says unformatted. Now, if this was the un this was the uh, before version of the view, before theming, it would be using this file right here for the template. But I've made one key change to it, and I'll show you that in a second. And basically, I've done made that key change in a template file um, called this, views view unformatted rent due, so that that change will only apply to this one particular view and not all the unformatted views on the site. Now let me go ahead and tell you how I did that. So for step four, what I'm going to do is just go to the actual folder where all the, the fields, or I'm sorry, the files live for the views module. Let's open up Windows Explorer. And here's the root folder for our project. And I'm going to go to Sites, All, Modules, and Trib, and Views. And then I'm going to look for templates. Sorry, theme. And I'm going to look for the template for unformatted. And here it is. Okay. 
So the step here is we're going to copy this and we're going to put it into the folder for our custom module. Sometimes you would put it Sometimes you would put it in the folder for your theme, but in this case, I want all the files to live together. So let's go to Modules, Custom, Hey Rental. Uh, the submodule is called HRC, and then the Templates folder. And as you can see, since I already completed this, I, am, I already have the other one, but just to show you for illustration purposes, I start with this file name, and then I rename it so that it, is, it has this file name. The next step I'm going to show you is the one and only change that we're going to make to the template file. And then, then we get into the juicy stuff, which is the CSS. But uh, what we have to do so that the system can differentiate between uh, one customer and another customer, we have to add an ID for each row. So since uh, let's go back to the un let's go back to the view itself. Since Dan Auerbach is not going to be our only customer, we don't want to click this button and send a message to all the other customers as well as Dan. Um, so we need an ID for this row that's going to be uh, allow the system dif to differentiate Dan from all the other customers. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to ed edit that template file. So let's go back to Windows Explorer. So we've already renamed uh, the file, and but I'm going to look at what that template file looks like before I make any changes. And here we go. This is the before uh, template file. So this is um, just defining the HTML and what is in the HTML. And here you see the row uh, as it's being printed out of Drupal. And you've got the div for the row. And over here you can see where it puts the class. And this is what ends up in the HTML when the view is printed out on your screen. Now I need to make one change to that. I need to put an ID. So let's look at what it looks like after I make that change. And here we go. You, as you can see, uh, nothing has changed except I've added this right here, piece of code. So it says ID, and then I know there's a object uh, in the template for the view. So I reference that object, and I know that um, under result, uh, there's an ID, and then I can put the node ID um, that is for that one customer. And so this is going to be printed out uh, on the view uh, when, you, when the user looks at it. And if we switch over to the view itself, we can click on inspect. And right here, you see div ID 107 and then the class. So this div ID 107 is what we just added to the template file. Now that we're done with the template file, we're going to get into the actual um, fun stuff of figuring out how to make the view uh, look attractive and look like what we want it to be. So let's go ahead and create a CSS file. And what I've done is I've actually placed that CSS file in the folder with the custom module. Because like I said before, when I was talking about the template file, I want everything, all the files to live together in one folder so that it's easy and portable. Um, so in this case, I've created this CSS file here. I call it, called it HRC CSS, and I have it open um, in my text editor, HRC CSS. And as a reminder, what I did um, to uh, differentiate the view that I want to theme versus all the other views with uh, the same uh, classes in them is I made a class for that view and only that view, and it's called .rd. Um, just as a reminder, I'll switch back over to the view edit field, view edit screen, close the theme information screen, and what we can see here is, okay, here's where I added CSS classes rd. Now, let's go back. Now that we have created the CSS file, we have to put it in the module information file. So in Windows Explorer, open up the module info file. And here's where you put that. So 
it's pretty simple. It's just says style sheets, and then it adds a row to the array of style sheets uh, in Drupal, and you give it the file name here. Let's close that. Step nine, we're going to actually take a look at how to theme uh, the row. So each customer, uh, basically, think of a customer as a row. Let's take a look at the before view. So all this stuff here is a row. And if there was another customer, you would see it uh, directly beneath or directly above this one. But for Dan, his row is right here. And the only information we have is his name, uh, the property, and the amount that he owes us. So let's go ahead and go in the CSS file. Okay, and what we can see is for the row, all we have is the class name here. And then we gave it some information about things like the background color and the padding and the margin. Now, how do we get this? How do we get this class name? Let's go back to the before view and right click and inspect. And we'll just uh, put our mouse over here and hover over things until we get um, the whole row is highlighted. Boom. Okay. Here we go. So it says views row. And since each row is going to look the same, and we don't have to differentiate between row one and row two and row three, we're just going to use the class views row. Let's go back to the CSS file. And here we go. You notice that it says views row instead of you know, views row hyphen one, uh, views row hyphen two, et cetera. Step 10 is we're going to actually make the, take one of the fields in the view and we're going to turn it into a button. Or we're going to actually make it look like a button. It's not going to have the functionality yet, but we're going to change the way it looks. So here, let's go ahead and get uh, the class name of one of the fields and in this case let's use this field because it um, this is the title field so let's find it here um, field content that's not it because we know that that's not going to apply to just that uh, it's not going to apply to the title field and here we go okay so right now you can see the title field is uh, highlighted so let's look at the class views field, views hyphen field. Well, that won't work because if we use that class, it's just going to apply the, the formatting or the CSS to all the fields in the view. So let's go to the next one. How about views field title? Yeah, well, that sounds a lot better. So then we know it's only going to apply to that field. So jumping back to CSS here and scrolling down. And here it is, views field title. So basically what I've done is just written a bunch of CSS and applied it to that, um, that field. And it's very simple. Um, I tell it to float left. I tell it what width the uh, button needs to have, the background color, uh, the padding, which is spacing inside the button around the text. And then I tell it the margin right, for example, uh, margin right is the space outside of the button on the right side. So let's look at the finished one. This is the after, and the margin right is this space right here. If you're not too familiar with this, with the CSS, I can uh, change that. Actually, I can adjust that if I want to. So let's just make it something bigger. And then refresh. Okay. And it just messes everything up because I made it bigger and it pushed all the other fields down. So now I'm going to set it back to five. Okay, now it's back to the way we want. Let's take a look at what we have to, what we have to do next. Um, we have to add CSS for the other fields. So what's the drill? First we find the class and then we write the CSS, right? So back to the before, here are our other fields, the property and the rent. Let's right click and inspect. Okay. 
div class fields be, or I'm sorry, div class views field. Again, that's not going to help us because it'll apply to everything and not just this one. So how about views field field address thoroughfare? So that one will apply to just that. Let's go back to CSS. And we have last name, which is, as you know, that's just, we got that from the inspect view in the browser. And here's thoroughfare. And as it turns out, all these um, last three fields are pretty much identical. So we just added the, the class, and then we copied and pasted the same CSS for each one. And then we're done. And basically, we end up with a finished product, which is right here. So in closing, um, I want to reference the thing that we talked about way back at the beginning, which is adding the ID to uh, the div and why do we have why is that important why do we have to um, to have that ID because it didn't affect uh, the way the view looked and it didn't affect anything to do with the CSS well the ID is what's going to be referenced by the JavaScript file so when we um, create a JavaScript file let me bring that up here it is open edit we have our JavaScript file. Okay, it's going to get that ID right here. So it's this, um, this function here, when the button is clicked, it's going to get the parent, it's going to look at the parent, which is the entire row, and it's get the, going to get the attribute called the ID and put it in this variable lease and ID. And so going back to our view, when I click this, that's what's going to happen. It's going to know that for Dan Auerbach, instead of, you know, Bob Pope, uh, we're going to send the message to him. So in closing, and I'll talk about more about the JavaScript for this view and actually the creation of a node when you click the button uh, in another video. But in closing, that's uh, some of your basics about how you uh, theme a view in Drupal 7. Um, it's pretty exciting because it gives you a lot of power. Um, a lot of times people are limit themselves to just making a view look like a table or making it um, and then being satisfied with whatever their theme for their site um, was pre-set up to make a view uh, look like. So I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have any questions, feel free to drop me an email at this address or leave a comment in the video and let me know if you have any questions or if you'd like a, uh, another video on any specific topic. All right, have a nice day.